once you've cut your fret slots. That's the fairly straightforward bit out of the way. But now you've got to start thinking about the frets themselves and how they are going in, how they're going to be held in, etc. <coughs> now I have a very small triangular file here, uh, a little needle file. And before anything else, I just uh, chamfer over the edge of each slot. Now what this does is, for one, it helps you centre your fret when you're putting it in, although that's, uh, that's just a, a side benefit. The main thing that it does is, when somebody in 10 or 20 years comes to take these frets out, this means that when they rip it out, the tangs of the frets aren't going to pull as much ebony away and make the ebony crack and disfigure the fretboard. So effectively what you're doing here is making life easier for some other nameless luthier and you hope that uh, everybody whose guitars you work on does the same for you. Because there's nothing quite like taking frets out and uh, unexpectedly ripping great big chunks out of the fretboard. Or somebody else's two or three thousand pound custom guitar. It's uh, downright depressing. You need to uh, make sure that there's no glue from inlays or binding etc in your fret slot and I've modified this poor lovely old saw for this job. The fret wire comes in straight lengths which you might choose to bend to something similar to the radius of the fretboard that you're working with uh, or some comes in nice big coils which uh, works just as well it's uh, pre-bent and uh, ideal. Now I'm cutting these frets slightly oversized this fret wire is uh, hypoallergenic uh, some people it turns out are allergic to the nickel in the standard nickel silver wire so they've taken the nickel out of the silver, and since there's no silver to start with but brass, uh, you end up with brass. And uh, the gold colour is rather nice, but also it's harder than the standard nickel silver stuff, which means it lasts longer. It sounds slightly brighter. Most fretting work doesn't require specialist tools. Uh, a saw, a hammer, that's fine. This is a beautiful old pair of pliers that I found in uh, an antique tool shop and it actually says for music wire on it and these are used for pulling old frets out. Uh, and it's just a lovely tool. This however is a specialist tool and is well worth investing in. We've cut through two of the three lines of binding so that the tang gets almost all the way to the end. We still need to shelve the fret and basically your fret goes in there and you gently cut away and end up with a shelf that uh, goes over the edge of the binding. Now these are called fret tang nippers because it nips the tang of the fret. I love that name. I tend to prefer using a pressure method when I do my fretting and effectively I've cut the fret slots so that they are slightly smaller than 
the the width of the tangs of the frets, which means that when I hammer the fret in, it pushes the wood out, and uh, the wood fibers obviously then close back over them, and this holds the frets in. There are some. There is another method where all you use is glue. So you cut your fret slot so it's the same width as the tangs, and you fill the slot with glue and clamp your frets in. Now, the main reason for doing this with the glue is that the glue will fill every single nook and cranny in that fret slot and once it's dried you've got a homogeneous neck with no gaps in it or anything like that and uh, there is no extra tension being built into your neck. Now with my method there is tension I'm obviously hammering into a piece of wood hammering one fret in isn't going to make much difference but hang on, hammering 24 in is going to slightly bow the neck back. Now for me, I will make a perfectly flat fretboard and make absolutely certain it's perfectly flat. And then I hammer the frets in and it pushes it backwards just a little bit. It pushes the fretboard so it bows out. And if you think about it, once you've got the tension on of your strings, it's going to pull the neck back perfectly flat. Uh, in most cases. I have uh, I recently made a couple of necks that had five laminate pieces in them and uh, the laminates we'd used were very heavy, very hard, exotic woods and uh, <laughs> yeah, we couldn't move the neck even with the truss rod because it was such a solid neck and the client had asked for a baseball, you know, a really thick inch plus thick uh, neck and that's uh, it caused us some problems because uh, it was so strong that uh, even string tension took weeks to counteract just the very small amount of uh, back bow that the frets had caused. But if you use just a glue uh, with none of the back bowing that I'm talking about, then when you put the strings on they are going to pull your neck up and forward and you then have to do more truss rod adjustments. So either method has its pros and cons. Now what I do is I, what I do, what I tend to do is I will combine both methods. I use the pressure, i.e. I have to hammer my frets in, which means bang 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 and the frets in and it never moves. Um, whereas with the glue, you've got to put your glue in, put your fret on, put a clamping call over the fret, and then clamp everything down. It's messy, it's time consuming, and uh, uh, frankly, I don't, I can't be bothered with it. Uh, but I will use a, an acrylic glue, no more nails, or something like that, fill the fret slot with that. Put the frets in so the fret is holding itself in with the tangs and the tension against the wood but the glue is still filling the gaps meaning that I've got a solid neck 